Hey guys, welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. This particular video is dedicated to understand the top 10 dying programming languages in the year 2021. I have categorized this particular video into two sections. So the first section will be dealing with the top 5 programming languages which are almost considered as obsolete and no more fit for IT development. Followed by the first segment, we have our next segment which has the top 5 programming languages which are actually obsolete but still have a major scope in the IT development. Now before we get started, I would like to tell you guys that we have daily updates on multiple technologies. If you are a tech geek in continuous hunt for the latest technological trends, then consider getting subscribed to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay updated for more videos from Simply Learn. Now let's get started. The Top 10 Dying Programming Languages so we have categorized the programming languages based on the community support and the job opportunities offered. Now the first segment, dying programming languages or completely obsolete programming languages. At first we have the assembly level programming language. It is said that the assembly language helps programmer to write the human readable code that is almost similar to machine level language. Machine level language is difficult to understand and read as it is just a series of numbers. Assembly language helps in providing full control of what a computer is performing. Now let's look into the advantages that the assembly language provided us. It was completely a hardware oriented programming language and it was used for critical jobs. It had very less number of instruction lines and it was really memory efficient. Now let's look into the drawbacks that made it a completely obsolete programming language. It takes a lot of time and effort to write the code for the same. It is very complex to understand since the syntax is very difficult to decode and followed by that it had a very complex control flow. And the last point, the programming language was completely platform specific, which means it did not offer the platform independent nature which the latest object oriented programming languages like Java offered. So followed by C++ programming language, we have the Pascal programming language. Pascal was almost right with the programming language C and a short time after the basic programming language. And all these languages were influenced by Algol 60 that came out in the year 1960. And these languages were further developed and given many purposes. With that, now let's discuss the advantages that Pascal had. Now it had a very good extensive error checking capability, followed by that it had variety of data structures in it and it compiled in multiple platforms. It had object oriented programming support. Now let's also look into the drawbacks it had which made it an obsolete programming language. So the major issues of the Pascal programming languages were the first one issues in control flow. When you write a complex program using Pascal programming language, then in sometimes in some specific scenarios, the compiler will end up decoding the code in a different manner than what you intended to do it actually. Followed by that, it also had some issues in data structures like arrays. Then it also had some issues in code evaluation or expression evaluation. And lastly, it had a lack of good library support. So followed by Pascal, the next dying programming language on the third number is the Haskell. So Haskell is a general purpose, statically typed, purely functional programming language with type interface and lazy evaluation. Now let's look into the advantages that Haskell had. It was a purely functional programming language like C. Then it has lazy evaluation. So lazy evaluation is something which makes the programming language lot efficient. So no evaluation of a code or an expression takes place unless you provide the control flow to that particular statement. So this kind of a feature makes the programming language a lot efficient. The processor won't have to waste its energy trying to be on standby without any command. Next followed by lazy evaluation we have advanced code safety and finally it offered a high level of safety to the applications. Now let's look into the drawbacks which made it obsolete. So it had a complicated interface and it was not suitable for critical applications. It had a higher learning curve and it was too tough to manage and learn in a short term of time. And lastly, it lacks widespread implementations. Now followed by Haskell, the next programming language is the Erlang language. The Erlang is a general purpose concurrent functional programming language and a garbage collected runtime system. 
So in this particular Erlang language, we also had the garbage collector. Now let's look into the advantages it provided us. It was basically a functional programming language. It had a small and simple syntaxes. It also had superior tools for packing and deploying of applications. It can build robust applications. So these were the strong advantages provided by Erlang language. Now let's look into the drawbacks that made it an obsolete programming language. So it had a tough time to set up and deploy the applications. It had no proper library. It was really complex in debugging. And finally, the hiring challenges. So most of the developers were not exposed to Erlang programming language and companies had tough time finding developers who had good grip on Erlang programming language. Now followed by Erlang, we have the fifth one, which is the CoffeeScript. CoffeeScript is a programming language that compiles to JavaScript. It adds syntactic sugar inspired by Ruby, Python, and Haskell in an effort to enhance JavaScript's reverability and readability. Specific additional features include a list of comprehension and destructing assignment. So some of the major advantages that CoffeeScript offered are, it was easy to understand. The syntax of this language is a very simple form of JavaScript. So followed by that, it had a no vac keyword. Unlike JavaScript, there is no need to use the var keyword before declaring a variable. Thus, it helps to avoid scope declaration issues in a program. So followed by no var keyword, we have the no symbols advantage. The symbols like semicolons, parentheses, and curly braces do not play any major role in CoffeeScript. Instead of these, the white spaces are used to differentiate the code inside functions, loops, etc. And finally, we have the less code advantage. In comparison to JavaScript, the lines of code reduces into half. Benefit, less code reduces complexity in the program. So these were the major advantages of CoffeeScript. Now let's look into the drawbacks that made it an obsolete programming language. So it was really difficult to set up the environment for using CoffeeScript. It failed to integrate with high-end libraries and it had terrible error reports and it was difficult to resolve exceptions in CoffeeScript. So these were the first five obsolete and dying programming languages of our list. Now let's continue with the next half which are considered as fading away programming languages but still have a little scope in the IT industry. Languages fading away. So the first one in here or the sixth one in the list is the Objective-C programming language. So Objective-C is a general purpose object oriented programming language that adds small talk style messaging to the C programming language. Now let's discuss the major advantages that Objective-C programming language had to offer. So it is basically mature and well tested programming language. Since it existed from a long period of time for the Apple developers, it is really mature and a well-tested programming language. Followed by that, it is a dynamic programming language that interprets developer thinking. It supports older versions till date and it is a stable programming language. So now let's look into the drawbacks that Objective-C had. It had no exception handling, it was low on security, and it had limited functionality and a complicated syntax. So despite of its drawbacks, I said that these programming languages had a little demand in the current IT industry. Now let's look into the Indeed.com for analyzing the opportunities for the developers knowing Objective-C programming language. So when you log into the Indeed.com and provide the Objective-C programming language and inside the city, some random city like New York, NY or Chicago, IL, let's select New York. So you can see that we have 24,365 jobs available for a developer who knows Objective-C programming language. This proves that this language might be getting obsolete and fading away, but still it does have demand in the market. So followed by the sixth programming language, we have the seventh programming language, which is considered as a fading away programming language. That is the Scala programming language. Yes, you heard me right. It is the Scala programming language. So basically Scala is a general purpose programming language providing support for both object oriented programming and functional programming. The language has a strong static type system. Scala is designed to be concise and many of Scala's design decisions are aimed to address criticisms of Java. Now let us look into the advantages that Scala provided us.
So basically Scala is both functional and object oriented programming language, but mainly it is used as an object oriented programming language followed by that it has a strong IDE support since it is inherited from Java it does have a strong IDE support next it is highly functional as discussed in the first point and finally it's better and developer friendly that means if you are a developer in Scala then you can switch easily back to Java as it is inherited from Java so you can work on both Java as well as Scala it's like having a two-sided sword now let us look into the disadvantages which make it an obsolete programming language. It is said that the tools in Scala are highly immature and it is complex and hard to learn as well as it has got some limited documentation and limited developer support. Since it runs on JVM it has no true tail recursive optimization as workaround you can use the at the rate trail recording annotation for practical benefits. Scala has limited developer pool, but while it is easier to find Java developers in numbers, not every Java developer knows what it takes to be a Scala developer in an efficient way. So these are the some of the major drawbacks that make Scala as an obsolete or fading away programming language. Followed by this, let's look into the next one. The COBOL programming language. Yes, you heard it right. COBOL is still in demand, yet it is fading away. So COBOL is a compiled English-like computer programming language designed for business use. It is imperative, procedural and since 2002 object-oriented. COBOL is primarily used in business, finance and administrative systems for companies and governments. Now let's look into the advantages that COBOL programming language had to offer. You can use COBOL programming language as a self-documenting programming language. COBOL language can handle massive data processing. It is one of the primarily used high-level programming languages. It is fully compatible with its past versions and COBOL programming language can handle bugs in a most effective manner and followed by the advantages. Now let's look into the drawbacks which made it go fade away or an obsolete programming language. So it had a wordy syntax, it is really complicated to format the code, it had no scientific applications other than the business applications and lastly it is very slow in compilation. Despite of these drawbacks, we said that it had some decent demand in the IT industry. Now let's go back to the indeed.com and check for the openings for COBOL. So when we log into indeed.com and search for COBOL job opportunities in the United States of America, then we can see 815 jobs available, which is like a little less than 1000 jobs, which is also a decent number. Now in our list, the next fading away programming language followed by COBOL is the Perl programming language. So Perl, also known as the Practical Extraction and Reporting Language, is a high-level language that is used for general purpose programming. It is a fundamental portability of Unix boxes along with many other systems. High portability of the scripts is one of the best features that can be achieved if system-specific functions can be avoided. Now let's look into the advantages that Perl had to offer us. So Perl includes amazing program dialects good file handling properties, file is an open source programming language and finally it is a multi-purpose programming language. Yet it had some drawbacks, now let's look into them. So Perl was considered as it has slow scripts and it was having difficult syntax, it was really hard to read and finally it had poor argument handling. Yet we also said that it had some decent demand in the industry. Now let's get back to indeed.com and search for Perl. So when you see Perl in Indeed.com in United States of America, we have 11,287 jobs still vacant for Perl developers. So it is still in high demand in the United States of America, yet it is considered as a fading away programming language. So followed by Perl, the top 10th programming language which is considered as an obsolete or fading away programming language is the Visual Basic .NET programming language. So Visual Basic .NET or VB.NET is a computer programming language developed by Microsoft. It was released in the year 2002 to replace the Visual Basic 6. VB.NET is an object-oriented programming language. This means that it supports the features of object-oriented programming which includes encapsulation, polymorphism, abstraction and inheritance. Now let us look into the advantages that VB.NET had to offer. 
So it was really simple and easy to understand programming language. It uses a graphical user interface and it is completely appealing. It offers component integration and finally it had automatic code formatting. Also it had some drawbacks. Now let's look into the drawbacks which VB.NET had. So it had issues with code transfer that it is not platform independent followed by that it had a problem with pointers. It was inefficient in processing and finally there was a major problem that is job insecurity. Now let's look for the demand it has currently in the IT industry. Let's get back to indeed.com. So when we logged into indeed.com and searched for VB.NET developers in the United States of America, then we found that there are 1756 job openings currently vacant, which is a little less than 2000. So it's a decent number. Now, it proves that VB.NET still has some demand in the IT industry. So with that, we have come to an end of this particular video. I hope this session was useful. If you have any queries regarding this session, then please feel free to write us down in the comment section below and we will have your queries answered from our experts as early as possible. This is Ravi signing off. Until next time, thank you. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.